Before we dive into today's topic, make sure you're subscribed to Legacy of Survival, the channel where history's lost tricks, survival secrets, and forgotten knowledge come back to life. If you love uncovering what time tried to erase, hit subscribe now. You won't want to miss what's coming. Here's the shocking truth most people never learn until it's too late for thousands of years. Humans survived brutal winters without electricity, and many of their methods were more reliable than anything plugged into a wall today. When the power goes out in winter, modern homes reveal a dangerous weakness. Electric heaters fail instantly. Central heating systems shut down. Even gas furnaces often need electricity to run their controls. But history tells a different story. Long before grids, generators, and thermostats, people learned how to trap heat, create warmth from simple materials, and turn ordinary rooms into life-saving shelters. These weren't clever tricks for comfort. They were survival necessities. Understanding how heat actually works is where the real secret begins. Heat doesn't disappear. It moves. It escapes through air gaps, walls, floors, and ceilings. Ancient builders knew this instinctively. Stone houses, sod homes, timber cabins, and earth-sheltered dwellings were designed to slow heat loss, not fight it with more fuel. One of the simplest historical techniques was reducing the space that needed heating. Instead of warming an entire house, families gathered in a single room, often the smallest one, and focused all available warmth there. This practice alone could raise indoor temperatures dramatically without burning extra fuel. One of the most effective forgotten methods was thermal mass heating. Thick materials like stone, brick, clay, and packed earth absorb heat slowly and release it just as slowly. Ancient hearths were built large and heavy on purpose. When a fire burned for a few hours, the surrounding masonry stored that heat and radiated it long after the flames died. In parts of Europe and Asia, massive masonry stoves were designed to burn once or twice a day, yet keep homes warm around the clock. No electricity, no moving parts, just physics, mastered through experience. Even without a fireplace, People use simple heat storage techniques. Heated stones wrapped in cloth were placed under beds or benches. Clay pots filled with hot embers were slid beneath tables where families gathered. In Japan, the traditional kotatsu used a heat source under a low table, trapping warmth beneath heavy blankets. This wasn't luxury. It was efficiency. Heating the human body directly requires far less energy than heating empty air. Another powerful survival tactic was insulation, long before the word existed. Animal hides, wool, straw, reeds, and layered textiles lined walls and floors. Thick rugs weren't decoration. They were barriers against cold ground. Tapestries weren't art pieces. They blocked drafts and trapped warm air. In medieval homes, wooden shutters were closed at night, sometimes sealed with cloth or waxed paper to prevent heat from leaking through glass that offered almost no insulation. These techniques turned fragile structures into surprisingly warm spaces. Draft control was treated as seriously as fire management. Small gaps around doors and windows were stuffed with rags, moss, or straw. Floors were covered. Chimneys were dampened when fires weren't active. In some cultures, doors were deliberately built low so warm air wouldn't escape as people entered and exited. Cold air sinks. 
warm air rises. This simple knowledge shaped entire architectural traditions. One of the most misunderstood historical heat sources is the humble candle. A single candle won't heat a room, but, you know, multiple candles in a confined, well-insulated space can raise temperatures noticeably. More importantly, candles provided steady, controlled heat that could be safely used indoors when managed correctly. In emergencies, people clustered around shared light sources, using body heat and small flames together to create survivable warmth. It was never about brute force heat. It was about balance. Clothing also played a critical role inside the home. Historically, people dressed for winter indoors, just as they did outdoors. Layering trapped air, the real insulator. Wool remained warm, even when damp. Linen wicked moisture away from the skin. Heavy night garments and bed coverings were essential tools, not afterthoughts. Beds were often enclosed with curtains, creating microclimates that stayed warm through the night, using nothing but body heat and residual warmth from the day. In colder regions, Earth itself became a heat ally. Semi-subterranean homes used the stable temperature of the ground to avoid extreme cold. Even today, the soil a few feet below the surface remains far warmer than winter air. Ancient people didn't need thermometers to know this. They felt it. Dug-in floors, earth-packed walls, and sod roofs created natural insulation that modern homes rarely match. Here's where things get clever. Heat rises but it can also be redirected. Reflective surfaces like polished metal, clay tiles or even light-coloured stone were positioned near fires to bounce warmth back into living spaces. This principle later influenced military shelters and early industrial heating designs. It's the same idea behind modern heat reflectors, just executed centuries earlier with simpler materials. Ventilation mattered too. Poor airflow could be deadly, especially when using fire indoors. Ancient homes balanced warmth and safety by designing smoke paths that pulled fresh air in while pushing smoke out. This airflow reduced moisture buildup and maintained breathable air without stripping away all the heat. It was an early form of environmental engineering refined over generations. During prolonged cold spells, people, you know, adapted their routines instead of fighting against nature. Work was done during daylight hours and nights were reserved for rest and conserving heat. Meals were carefully timed around when heat was available. Cooking wasn't just about preparing food, it was actually a heat event. Ovens and stoves would warm entire rooms, and, well, families often planned their days around that comforting warmth. So, the real lesson behind these forgotten methods isn't really about nostalgia. It's actually about resilience. You know, electricity is powerful, but honestly, it's pretty fragile. History teaches us that warmth doesn't come from wires. It comes from understanding materials, space, and, well, human needs. When systems fail, knowledge remains. Modern survival planning, it often skips these lessons, yet they're more relevant than ever. Power outages aren't rare. They're, in fact, inevitable. Knowing how to stay warm without electricity isn't extreme. It's practical. It's historical. And, yeah, it works. Now, this is where it all comes together. You don't need to live like it's the 1600s to benefit from these ideas. 
You just need to remember how humans survived before convenience replaced wisdom. Reduce space, trap heat, store warmth, insulate smartly. Use fire carefully. Dress with purpose. These principles kept people alive through centuries of brutal winters, and they can still protect you today. If this video opened your eyes to how much knowledge we've forgotten, that's exactly what Legacy of Survival exists for. Hit subscribe so you don't miss the next lost technique brought back to life. Like the video if this knowledge matters. Share it with someone who thinks warmth only comes from a switch. And stay curious, because history still has a lot to teach those willing to listen.